Hello and welcome to the Academic Integrity webinar organized by European Network for Academic Integrity and Center for Research Ethics and Bioethics at Uppsala University. Today we have with us representatives from the Bridge Project, Veronika Krasnichan and Dita Henek Labolova, who are going to talk about how to improve skills as a thesis supervisor. So, welcome. Uh, thank, thank you, you. Sonia. Thank, thank you, Sonia, for the for the welcome. So now you should uh, see uh, my screen is being shared. So uh, today in the webinar, we are going to focus on the skills of the supervisor uh, with regards particularly to academic and uh, research integrity, because this is uh, what uh, we uh, focus on, uh, not only in the European Network for Academic Integrity, who is uh, one of the organizers of this webinar, but also in the, in the bridge project. So let's start uh, with a quick uh, introduction of uh, us, the presenters. So uh, my name is Dita and I work in the European Network for Academic Integrity. I have been uh, teaching and supervising thesis on a university, on Mendel University, for like 11 years. And uh, I'm also involved in the Bridge Project. And uh, Veronica, she's uh, a leader uh, in the bridge project of an output which is focused on uh, bridging the academic and research integrity. And she's actually the person who like stands behind the, the checklists for supervisors and for students, uh, which we are going to present today within the webinar. Uh, with this webinar, we will start uh, with uh, some introduction where we will try to get some information from you, our participants. So first, we would like to get to know you a little bit, because according to the registrations, uh, we know that uh, we have quite a diverse audience. And uh, then we would like to ask about uh, your experience and uh, we would like to speak about the motivation why we actually were developing this tool. And in the second half, which will be taken over by Veronica, we will introduce you uh, the checklists uh, for supervisors and for students, which are focused on like guiding uh, yeah, the students and the supervisors through writing uh, the, uh, the thesis or supervising the thesis from the point of view of academic integrity and uh, research integrity. So uh, first, uh, I would like to start with uh, some introduction uh, from you. So I will share with you a quiz in Mentimeter. I guess you know Mentimeter or this kind of tools where you can just quickly answer our questions. And I will start with three questions. First, I would like to know what is your position at your institution? So who actually we have here? Then how many theses have you supervised? So to know how much uh, experienced supervisors we have here attending. And if you previously received some training uh, before you started supervising. So uh, to join the Mentimeter quiz, it's like really simple. Just uh, in your browser, open a page which is menti.com. I would recommend you to open it on a like different screen than when, where you have this presentation. It will be easier for you. So for example, if you have smartphone with you, just like open it with your smartphone. You don't have to download anything, just like type menti.com and then type there this uh, code, which you can see on the, on the screen, sorry. Uh, I will type it also to the chat so uh, you can uh, copy it from the chat or you can retype it from the chat and uh, by this you will uh, join the quiz. So I will open the quiz here. Ah, okay, <laughs> you, st you started to answering uh, during my introduction. So it seems that we have the majority of teachers and uh, ac or academicians. We have some librarian and some researcher, and we have no students. Okay, there were quite many registered students. So I was wondering like about their level, but it seems that they are not here or they don't want to tell. So we will wait a little bit. And if somebody is struggling with joining the Mentimeter, just please let us know in chat so we can help you.
Yeah, the librarians are getting stronger. Okay. <laughs> And if you joined uh, us uh, just a little bit later, you can still join us with this Mentimeter just by typing menti.com into your browser and uh, by submitting the code, which you can see on the top of my screen, which I'm sharing. Okay, so I would move forward because we don't have so much time. So thank you for the quick introduction. So it seems that we have majority of teachers here and some librarians and some researchers. So now I'm like really curious, uh, like what is your experience with uh, supervision of thesis? So how many theses have you uh, supervised? Uh, please type uh, a number in the field, which you can see in the phone. Now you should see the second question. Okay, so the answers are coming. So five. Wow, 120. Okay, a lot. Somebody very experienced. Okay, so it seems that we uh, range from zero to like, yeah, to 120. So this is like, it actually in correspondence to our annotation that we wrote that this uh, webinar is for newbies, but also for experienced supervisors. Okay, and my third question to you at this uh, introduction, uh, before you start supervising uh, your first thesis, now this is a question for the ones who yeah, probably just for the ones who have already supervised something or just like planning to supervise something really soon. Have you received some training? So do you have some standard training at your institution that, for example, everybody's receiving? Was there an experienced colleague who gave you advices, talked to you, told you what to do, not to do, or nothing? But uh, there is some guidance materials from your institution or like really no support from your institution. And yeah, it seems that unfortunately at most institutions or for most of you, there is like really uh, no guidance or no advices for the supervisors who are starting to supervise their first thesis. Okay, so it seems that it's like really the, the majority who has not received any training. So yeah, and that's actually why we are here with the with this webinar and why we are here with the checklist uh, to help in this case when there is like no other help coming. So at least to help with the aspect of academic and research integrity in supervising of the thesis, because we know that these are not the only aspects uh, which uh, we have to focus on in supervision. There are so many aspects. So at least with these two, we would like to uh, help you. And as we are going to speak about the academic integrity and research integrity, uh, and I guess we are here quite wide uh, audience, maybe probably with different backgrounds. So we would like to ask you, what is your understanding of the term academic integrity? like? Yeah, what do you imagine there? It can be like one word, the first thing which comes to your mind or some definition. Okay, here we are coming with a definition. Ethical behavior. Being professional, that'd be nice. Ethics in research, uh -huh. so we are already coming here to the research. Being a good guide for students, uh -huh. so teacher being a role model for the students. Individual and institutional practices in teaching, research and scholarship. So I suppose like the good practices and ethical practices.
I'm not sure if you are still typing, but I will just uh, switch to the definition that uh, we have, or yeah, the definition actually, which I have on the next slide is the long definition, which we have, uh, uh, which appeared here as the first. So compliance with ethical and professional principles, standards and practices and consistent system of values, which serves as a guidance for making decisions and taking actions. And uh, this is the uh, this is the definition, uh, which is uh, uh, the official definition uh, by the European Network for Academic Integrity, which we agreed on and which is available in the in our glossary of terms of academic integrity. And uh, also to compare it with another definition, I choose the definition from uh, the International Center for Academic Integrity, who is based in the US. So it's like. Yeah, behind the ocean point of view on academic integrity, who define uh, the academic integrity as a commitment to uh, basic six values, which is honesty, trust, fairness, respect, responsibility, and also courage, because sometimes it takes courage to actually deal uh, with uh, some misconduct or to act uh, in the compliance with the uh, good principles. Okay, so this is the definition of academic integrity. And now let's go to the very close term, uh, which is the research integrity. So this is the next question, which will appear to you. So the research integrity, what do you understand under this term? Is there some difference from academic integrity? Yeah, it's the same as the ethical behavior, but I like uh, the addition of the whole research process. So now the research integrity focuses more on research process, but we are keeping with the ethical behavior. Uh -huh. Anything else? I did some research. Mm -hmm. Compliance with the ethical and professional principles, standards, and practices by individuals or institutions in research. Be responsible, uh -huh. researcher, which means being fair and ethical. Again, the longest definition which appeared here, the compliance with ethical and professional principles, is actually the one which I wanted to share with you. Again, this is the uh, definition by Inai, which you can find uh, in uh, our glossary. Uh, so we can move forward, I guess. Seems no more definitions are coming. So... Uh, when we compare the academic and research integrity, I think like we basically get to the uh, same core that the values are the same. It's just like a little bit of the aspect where we apply it in academic integrity. We rather spoke about the teaching in general, but in the research integrity, obviously we focus rather on research. Uh, like in practice, uh, probably, uh, academic integrity is often targeted uh, on the newcomers to academia. So maybe the new students who are entering the university, they have some uh, courses uh, which might focus on academic integrity or maybe just like in between the lines in normal courses, like the regular courses, they appear things which are like focusing on this uh, like uh, cheating, uh, sorry, not cheating and citing properly, not plagiarizing and uh, so on. 
And uh, then the research integrity education or focus on research integrity is usually coming uh, much later, maybe in the early PhD studies when the students are expected to, to do like really do research. Maybe sometimes it can be coming even later, maybe when uh, in some postdoc positions or entering the research labs already with the PhD studies, which is quite a huge gap between the first year students who are like introduced to academic integrity and the research integrity education, which is usually coming later, if it's like coming much earlier at your institutions, like good for you. But from our uh, experience, it usually comes later. Uh, so we would like to close this uh, gap and put the research and uh, academic integrity closer to uh, each other, because usually already the master students, they are uh, you doing some research project or they might be doing some research project within their thesis. And definitely there are principles of research integrity there that they should be uh, familiar with and that they should already know. And uh, this is uh, why we actually were creating uh, the checklist and why we were uh, focusing on bringing these two uh, principles together, the academic and research integrity. And the reason why we think it's important to focus on academic and research integrity in uh, the thesis supervision is because at the end, it leads to the higher level of uh, education, uh, better quality of education, better quality of results. It prevents the cheating. But we know that it's like really hard work because there are so many things which we have to focus when we are uh, supervising a thesis. So I'm coming with the last few questions from uh, the Mentimeter. First of them is uh, about the students from your institution. Uh, do they receive some training in academic or in research integrity before they start writing their thesis? So is it only in academic integrity? Or would you say it's rather research integrity only or kind of like both of them or no training? I like that we have here the competition between the no training at all, or at least in these aspects, and the training of academic integrity. So please one more vote so we know the winner who has more, even uh, if it's like nothing or the training in academic integrity. Ah, both. Great. That's even better. Okay, so these are actually quite good results because, yeah, the first three columns means that the students are receiving some training from these integrity aspects, which is like really great. Uh, and uh, one more, uh, I think it's this is the last question uh, from the Mentimeter, which I will give you. And this is now when we are going to practical things regarding the thesis supervision. Uh, because we are going to share the checklists with you very soon, which are like full of advices, which have been collected uh, from quite many experts. So what would be your one would, uh, sorry, one good advice that you give to your students when they are writing their thesis? It can be like one good or the best advice which you think you are giving. And if you are a student or if you don't supervise the uh, thesis, what would be the advice that you would like to receive uh, before uh, you would uh, you were writing your thesis? Yeah, so either is if you are a supervisor, what you give, or if you have not supervised the thesis, like what you would like to uh, know before you start writing? Okay, be honest. Good. <laughs> one of the values from the International Center for Academic Integrity. Cite everything that is not from your head. Yeah, 
very good. Yeah, start now. Do not start too late. Yeah, problem with timing. Uh -huh. It takes time to learn academic writing, definitely. Oh, very good one in Czechia. All the thesis must be accessible to the to the public. So have this on mind uh, when you are writing the thesis. Like probably for the rest of your life, your thesis will be available in public. I believe this might be a case of many other countries as well. And it's public and online. That's like important thing to to mention because yeah, when it's public and in some like dark or a hidden library, then it's not so obvious, but when it's on the internet. Okay, so not sure if we should wait like for one more advice if somebody is typing. If you come with an advice uh, later, something later comes to your mind, please uh, write it uh, to the chat. And uh, now I think it's the time to give my word uh, to Veronica, who will uh, introduce you our advice, uh, our advices, which we collected and put them to the, to the checklist. Yes, thank you, Dita. Thank you very much. So now I'll, I'll be talking about the new tool we developed about the checklist for supervisors, which was developed by Bridge Project Partners. Uh, shortly about the Bridge, uh, it's an international project uh, where we are building bridges between higher education, business and also citizen science. We have partners from Sweden, Lithuania, Czech Republic, of course, Ukraine and North Macedonia. So there are quite a lot of people from uh, different fields, different countries, uh, different backgrounds uh, working together uh, to promote academic uh, and research integrity, uh, or not only in, uh, in higher education, but also business and uh, citizen science. More about the projects you can find in on our web page uh, where we will share uh, even other outputs of this project because the checklists are not the only one. We are also uh, developing guidelines and uh, uh, games and so on. So if you want to know more about this project, you can uh, go to the website. And if you don't want to miss any news, uh, you can uh, uh, put there your email and uh, you are going to get the news letters uh, with with every every news uh, which uh, are coming really soon because we are finalizing a lot of stuff now so for who are the checklists uh, right now i'm talking about supervisors but uh, we are uh, making three types of checklists uh, not only for the supervisors but uh, for the phd or doctoral students too and uh, also for the master students uh, we have to mention that it's not for master students in general, it's for master students who are writing their first thesis. Uh, it's not for PhD students in general, mostly it, it could be uh, said that it's for the, that one who are writing their first article, who are uh, quite new in, in uh, research and in, in, in their field. And uh, for supervisors, we tried to be uh, as general as possible uh, to um, help the supervisors guide not only the master students, but the doctoral students. Uh, what is the main purpose uh, and how it should help? As it was said before, uh, 
the, the checklist might be used to make sure that the students adhere to appropriate norms and values in research and as they con conduct their thesis work or the first article uh, and the supervisors are there to guide and mentor them. So we are not focusing only on the structure, only on the uh, tips how to write and so on. We are focusing mostly on the values and the, the academic integrity which should be kept uh, through the whole process of writing. Uh, maybe it, it may sound easy to develop checklists, you know, sometimes you can, you can just uh, sit down or if you are writing your to-do list, you can, uh, you can easily make the checklist for writing too, if you have some uh, knowledge, if you if you wrote uh, any thesis, you might be able to develop the one checklist by yourself. But uh, we had a really long way developing this checklist. And uh, I think it's worth to mention our methodology and how the checklists were developed. So the version zero was when uh, we asked the project partners the, uh, from, from different countries and fields to independently of the others propose a draft of checklist. Why we did it this way is because we wanted to uh, know how they, how the project partners uh, will develop the checklist, what is going to be the structure, what is, uh, what are going to be, what is going to be the wording, uh, what they think it's important to mention, and uh, you know, just to see ideas from different fields, different countries. So in total, we got eight checklists. And the first version we created was just by merging all the designs together. And uh, that was our start. That's how we started. Of course, there were a lot of rep repetitive uh, ideas, but that's how we saw that this is something uh, worth mentioning. This is something what really needs to be in the checklist because everybody was thinking about this one. So we were for the commenting this and, and uh, modifying the wording and modifying the design. Uh, then we had like five rounds of the reviewing process online and also in person within our, our uh, team members, with, with our team members, when we were again adjusting the content and wording and we were trying to develop the structure and so on. When we thought that it looks good and it's ready to be published, uh, we uh, ask for graphical design to make it uh, uh, readable and, and uh, make the graphical version. And uh, we got the feedback from conference, uh, NI conference attendees uh, last year in, in, in Porto. Uh, sorry, this year in Porto. And we were getting feedback from experts in academic and research integrity. This was really a huge eye opener for us. We said before, this is uh, uh, just a draft, but uh, this, is what, this was something what helped us a lot. So we uh, changed the structure and uh, we changed uh, how we were looking at the checklist before. And uh, then we presented the version four for the end users, we can say for master students, PhD students, and also supervisors um, at the project LTT meeting in Vilnius. We got another feedback, another great ideas how to make the checklist even better. So then another version, uh, which was developed uh, and this version we thought was, fin was, was the last one, but we got a lot of feedback from PhD students uh, who were attending uh, NI uh, PhD summer school in Turkey. And uh, also we asked for the last uh, feedback from experts from the field of academic and research and integrity around the world. Um, we were working on this feedback too, and now we have the version seven of the checklist, which is the final one. And we, uh, this is the, the version who, which we are gonna share. So the way was quite long uh, and uh, it was really a lot of work done, a lot of feedback from different people. So we hope that uh, we made our best uh, to uh, develop uh, a tool which is going to be really useful uh, for the supervisors and also for the students. 
as I said before, uh, what what is the aim of the checklist and, and how it should be used? I have to mention that uh, we designed the checklist to be used from the beginning of the supervision and through the whole process of writing thesis or uh, any, uh, any, any paper, uh, any research paper from, for the PhD students. Of course, we everybody has to be aware that the list might need to be adapted to your oral needs, depending on the research field, depending on the past experience or the institutional policies and rules. Also, we all know that it's not possible to make the checklist which is uh, going to suit to everyone and you're going to be able to check every uh, every checkbox. Uh, so, of course, there might be uh, some adaptation, but we hope that uh, uh, it's gonna be uh, really that the checklist is is uh, gonna help us still with a lot of things. And uh, of course, we have to say for the supervisors that uh, depending on the division of the responsibilities on the institutional level, it might not be you as a supervisor who is who should be doing the items who are listed below in, in, in the checklist, but you have to make sure that your students is properly guided through, uh, through this process or through uh, mm, that items which are mentioned there because so one of the feedback was that okay but why should I do that this is the student responsibility but in other countries it's not the student responsibility the supervisors should have a look at it so that's why I'm mentioning it that uh, uh, that if you are not doing it you have to make sure that the student is doing it now about the content, uh, I was thinking how should I present this to you and I decided that uh, it's going to be the best if you are going to have a look at it after the presentation, that if that you will uh, get the, the print PDF version and you will be able to go through this because it would probably take you uh, quite a long time. But uh, I'm going to shortly introduce you what you can expect to be there, to be in, in the checklist for supervisors. Uh, there are going to be some general preparations for me as a supervisor, what I need to know before I will start uh, to supervise the student, what the institution expects and so on. So some, check, some checks from this field. Of course, we can miss the academic and research integ integrity, which is going to clarify, be clarifying the values and principles of cooperation and publishing, not only for me, but what should I introduce to the student and how. Uh, next, there are preparations for students' work, how we should set the workspace, uh, how uh, we should communicate with each other, uh, what we have to think about uh, before the students student will start, uh, how our cooperation will work. After that, there is formulating research questions and study, uh, important task which needs to be checked. Of course, this uh, part is not about you, it's about the student, but this is something what we had to mention, what you have to look at it and or the supervisor should uh, look at it and uh, make sure that uh, the student understood the, uh, what, what uh, he or she should do. Then there is a part about the feedback, about the communication with the, the student, uh, how the feedback should look like, and uh, just to make sure that you are communicating in the right way and trying to uh, encourage the student. Then there is a part about data processing and analysis, uh, just uh, to mention some frequent problems in data collection and analysis. Uh, it, this part may be uh, somehow uh, uh, no, this part is definitely for everyone, but uh, it depends on uh, what uh, type of uh, uh, research you or the student is doing. So maybe there will be uh, some space for you to add some checkers to, to which needs to be checked uh, during the, this uh, data collection and, and analysis. 
Also, there are tips on how to introduce students to academic writing if they had uh, no course, if they are not experienced uh, in academic writing. We are getting you some tips what you should maybe think about. If uh, the students are already introduced to this uh, field, that they are already writing, it's going to be easy for you just you know to think that, uh, yes, I know that the student uh, knows how to uh, how to cite and I, I don't need to mention anything but sometimes you even have to send some link for example which we are providing to help students make sure that they are they know that they are citing and paraphrasing uh, how they should there is also part about collaborative work uh, what to watch out when you are cooperating not only you with the student but also if the student is cooperating with the third party uh, for example someone from business and so on there is a part about ethical publishing how to help a student su successfully publish an article uh, what they should uh, think about and also final consideration something not to forget before the defense not uh, these are this is the content of the checklist which we will provide to you really soon and you will be able to go through and uh, uh, maybe give us some feedback too and uh, what couldn't be missed is uh, general tips which we are providing that uh, for the for example for for the supervisors that all the supervisors should be aware that they are role models so they should also enculturate the students into discipline help them cross the bridge from being a student to being a researcher for example if we are talking about the doctoral students uh, this help is priceless uh, encourage students to interact with the research community uh, this is a really priceless tip too uh, for for new phd students to uh, help them reach the community and uh, introduce them to the community which could really help them and support them during their studies also encourage students to self-reflect and help them to develop critical thinking try to motivate your students ask them about their work how is it going and uh, uh, use you also as i said before if you are a role model you should uh, show the student that you are active and you are engaged and that you are reading their work and giving them the feedback also you should advise or you may advise the students to have a research diary as a useful tool to keep an inform important information in one place which uh, can be helpful helpful for you too so you will see the progress of the writing now I introduce you to the to the supervisors checklist, but we also developed two others for the master students and for the doctoral students too. They are quite similar because uh, during the writing the thesis or or during the writing uh, uh, first article, there are some steps uh, which which are really common. But uh, for doctoral students, we added of course more uh, uh, more checks. Uh, about uh, the publishing, about the ethical publishing, about the collaborative research project. And uh, we were more focusing on formulating research question and, and designing the research uh, uh, as it should look like. Uh, for me as a PhD student and also me as a supervisor before what I was before, uh, this would be a really helpful tool which I could give to the students so uh, I can uh, I can see their progress and uh, they would know what to do. I hope this, uh, that this checklist will help even the students who are struggling to cooperate with the supervisors because sometimes uh, students are sharing with me I am I have to say that I'm running an Instagram account uh, for Czech and Slovak students, which is called Academic uh, Integrity or Academic Akademická Etika in our in our language. And uh, sometimes the students are uh, telling me that they are having problems with uh, with the supervisors and they don't know what to do. And uh, there are uh, a lot of stuff they need to need to be done and they have no idea what, what where to start and so on. Uh, so maybe even with the uh, with the supervisors, if 
this checklist will come this way to the students too uh, who are struggling with them maybe this would be a really nice way to help even them uh, to keep the track and to uh, support them uh, to check that or to be sure that they are doing what they should do and uh, even if there is the supervisor uh, help missing so i hope that this is not the case when i'm talking to you while i'm talking to you as a supervisors but um, uh, this is the other way i'm looking at the checklist so it's only it's for supervisors too to give something to the students they can uh, work on together but uh, even if the supervisor is not working as he or she should uh, this uh, checklist hopefully might help uh, the students too uh, of course we are going to share this uh, with you and uh, you will be able to go through that and maybe adapt it as you wish uh, now for now on the checklists are in the pdf version printable version but what we are working on is uh, smart pdf because uh, in in the checklist there are some for example um uh, some some words they aren't gonna be able to understand or uh, some uh, for example if we are talking about research diary they they maybe not, don't know what they should think about what what is the research diary so there is the link which which is helping them to understand how the research diary should look like and uh, if we are talking about values of academic integrity there is a link uh, to uh, to the ICAI and uh, which is talking about the these problems and uh, talking about the values to make it sure that the students will understand uh, all uh, all um, all everything which what is in the in the checklist. So for the conclusion from my side, uh, we know that writing a thesis is demanding and challenging. Sorry, Dita. Yeah, uh, I'm so, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but we have a question from the uh, from the audience, and I guess uh, it's uh, yeah that you can't see it when you are sharing the screen. So there is a question: if we can share the checklists like now, uh, and I'm sorry we can't share them now, but we will send you uh, next week uh, the email with the link to the recording from this uh, webinar, the link to the presentation, and uh, we will also attach uh, the checklists, and they will be on the pages of the bridge project which we are going to share soon and maybe there is one more question i'm sorry it just appeared there uh ah if the checklists are translated into other languages uh and uh ah okay there is a question about translation to ukrainian and disseminating across uh, among the Ukrainian students and faculty. Yes, you may do it and we will be really, really happy for this. For now, the checklists are available only in uh, English, uh, but we are, uh, they uh, will be available in under the Creative Commons license and we really, really welcome any translation. So please translate them to your uh, national languages, share them with your students. And if you send us back the translations, we will share them on ENI pages and on the bridge pages so they can reach also other people uh, who speak to your language. So thank you very much for this uh, interest. Yeah, and sorry, Veronica, for jumping in. Yeah, that's completely okay. Thank you. So as as I trying to say, we we all know that writing a thesis is demanding and challenging uh, task covering many aspects. We also know that supervising thesis is demanding and challenging task covering many aspects. And uh, if the supervisor is willing to learn something new, is willing to learn how to be better supervisor, this is something uh, which is. Uh, the, the best what could happen to the students because uh, uh, they will definitely get the best support during the writing uh, and uh, uh, it, they would really beneficial uh, be beneficial benefiting from from this uh, we are trying we were trying to uh, show you this tool uh, which should offer uh, to students and also to supervisors some support and uh, that could help you uh, to manage the uh, really hard uh, 
and challenging task and uh, we hope that uh, you will be able and, and you will like the checklist and you will be able to share them with your colleagues and also with the students as Sadita said they are now available under creative commons license uh, the translations with are going to be great uh, what I me personally I'm planning to to translate it into the Czech language because uh, uh, I'm working on this over over the year so I think I know every word and uh, I'm definitely going to translate it into the Czech language to help the Czech, Czech uh, and maybe a Slovak students but if you are willing to share it and translate it into other languages we are going to be more than happy and if you uh, are going to share that translation with us it is going to be the best so we, we can share it with the others and uh, uh, help help others too this is all from me of uh, what I wanted to share. Uh, I need to promote our Twitter and also our our uh, web page where we are gonna share, as I said, the links to, to the checklist and also other materials uh, from uh, our bridge project, which uh, hopefully might be beneficial for you too. You can already find at the web page uh, the presentation for from today and uh, also other presentations from the project, even the ones uh, when we were developing the checklist. And as we have uh, still quite a lot of time, uh, there is a lot of space for your questions, which we are happy to answer. So please uh, use the Q&A tool, which you should uh, use in, uh, in Zoom. And this will display your questions uh, to, to us. Or I think you can also type the questions to the chat so everybody can see it. Oh, sorry, chat is disabled. Okay, so only the Q&A. <laughs> session for the for the questions okay thank you Julia we have a thank you from uh from Julia so thanks happy that that you uh like the project may I ask a question why in the process of writing theses do you think would be most beneficial to use these checklists and what's the relationship between there are three different types of checklists so what's the relationship between them should, should, should I answer Dita yeah so as I said before the uh, checklists are intended to uh, be used from the beginning of, uh, of writing so if uh, when you know that you are supervisor or you are going to be a supervisor, you, you, you can download it and, and uh, go through uh, the, uh, the checks. Uh, there are some important checks to need to be checked before you are even supervising. And then during the whole process of supervision, uh, there are some checks to, to be done. So. Uh, I think you know, the best start is is when you know that you are gonna supervise, and uh, and if of course even before the meeting with with the students because uh, you will learn some things you need to discuss for example with the student before they will start writing, and uh, how this how these checklists are connected um, so. Many, uh, of course, during the as during the writing of the students, there are many aspects that needs to be checked. So we tried to connect the uh, the this free uh, this free checklist. So if the students has the tick that they need to think about or they need to do uh, the there is the check that the supervisor should check if it's done uh, in the proper way. So uh, this is how the checklists are connected and uh, how they differ, as I said before, uh, for the supervisor, uh, for the master students, it's more about writing the thesis. And for the PhD students, it's uh, for uh, writing not only the thesis, but also articles. So it's about the ethical publishing and uh, uh, maybe cooperation with third parties and so on. So this is how they differ. Uh, 
hopefully when we will go through this um, because it's it's quite a long reading so uh, if hopefully if you will go through this uh, you will find it useful and helpful for you and uh, as we said we are also developing the smart pdf so in the smart pdf you should be able uh, to uh, maybe add some of your tasks for example what you think is going to be missing or something what is going to be special for your field or from your institution and uh, then give it to your student uh, as a tool uh, how we what they should or may use uh, during their writing I think it's good like not to see the checklists that I think that you would take once and you would just like check everything and uh, have it done. But it's mm -hmm. like the really thing which uh, either the supervisor and the student should use like continuously all the time and like checking it and maybe sometimes even like marking some things as in progress because they some of the things will really take time to before they are uh, finished because yeah, the thesis is long. Uh, progress uh, sorry long long time project yeah and uh, even we tried to line it as it may be the the best way sometimes you need to skip something and then go back and forth to to make sure that it's done so uh this is this is how it works it's it doesn't have to be lined and you don't have to take it one after another maybe sometimes it's uh, good for you to skip to to another part and and go back but we tried to do our best to make it uh, as it should on may uh, be best during the writing process okay i don't see any new questions in the q a uh, or nor in chat i would like to thank dita and veronica for joining us today and presenting this interesting project uh that i'm coordinating i must say in order to be ethical of course uh so i'm kind of biased but please follow the project on the twitter and uh, uh in social media and facebook uh next time we will see each other on november 11th and uh, our guests are going to be from the european students union uh oraz miradov he is going to talk about celebrating the European Year of Youth to through academic integrity, how students help in establishing institutional integrity and values. Uh, you can see here the link to the website academicintegrity.eu slash vp slash e monthly webinars. Uh, these uh, members of the ORAS is also a member of the ENI Working Group for Students, whose purpose is to integrate students and student bodies in ENI activities. Uh, so please join us uh, to learn more about how to uh, engage students basically in uh, this important task we all are so passionate about, uh, creating the culture of academic integrity. So thank you so much for today. Uh, the webinar is recorded and will be published on the website and uh, on the yeah. on the ENI YouTube channel. And don't forget to, to check the checklists next week in, on the Bridge Project. The Bridge Project site is also hosted by ENI, so you can find it on the same web page. Thank you so much for today. Tita and Veronica once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for everybody joining us.